Okay, so let us go according to your syllabus. Since I've already introduced to you about the polysiphonia, about the red algae, so you will know what to expect if you see it to, on Monday. Okay, so you will know what to expect. Now let's see the systematic position. You can see the phylum class order family genus there. Mm. Uh, because you've already done no uh, classification of algae, so you know better. Okay, so let's start immediately with the occurrence. Now there are uh, one hundred fifty species, uh, in the world, and there and in India we have around sixteen species. Okay, here, there are total one hundred fifty species, and in India we have sixteen species. Okay, so you study like that. Just the key words you remember. Now, they grow in the marine habitat, means in the uh, ocean water, okay. They are found in the littoral and sublittoral zones, okay. How do I, ex okay, I'll explain like this. Let's imagine that this is the, this is the edge of the coastal region, okay. Then, this, the water starts from here, no, from here. Uh, I won't draw like that, I'll draw like this, okay. So, this part is the ocean side, keeps on going ocean. Now, the water starts like this. Now, here, this is this arrow. See this arrow? This is soil. This is soil. No? Then, this is deep part. This middle one. This uh, star. This is the middle deepest part. No? So, uh, there will... it can Nothing can grow in there. No? Because there's no soil. But here... I'll redraw it once more. But here... There is soil here, no? Oof. Let me draw like that. Yeah. Here, this part, this slope has soil, right? So, since this, um, since this algae, this polysiphonia, it has a prostrate system, remember? It has an erect system and a prostrate system which has root-like structures. Then those root-like structures, they prefer to have uh, a substrate, so that's why we will find them here in the littoral or sublittoral zone. Okay. Because they can root themselves here. You get it? Let me just draw again roughly. Somehow it's rooting there and the algae is growing. And then this is the ocean water. Okay. So we find them here. Okay. The littoral or the Subliteral zone. So I think it's clear enough from my horrible diagram using my finger, you know. So it's it'll be I as long as you've understood it doesn't matter. So in India we find them in the western and the southern coasts. Okay. So they grow on rocks, they could be later fights, and some they grow as epiphytes, okay, on other plant species. Okay. Or some of them can grow as semi-parasites. So let's look at the key words. We have 150 species worldwide of which only 16 are present in India. Then we find them in the littoral or the sublittoral zones. They are marine in habit and they like to grow on rocks. Some of them are lithophytes, some of them are epiphytes and some of them are semi-parasite. So you write just like those for how many points? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, around 6 points. You enough. It's more than enough for you for the occurrence. Now, let's go to the next. Now, let's look at the plan body. Now, it is multi-axial means it has, it comes from many, many directions. No, multi-axial. It is well-branched. Remember, we saw like leaf-like structures. So, it is a well-branched. And we cannot use the word plant body. I mean, we can't. We have to use the word thallus, right? Because these are lower plants, and the colors are dark brown, reddish, or bluish red. Okay. So just because I showed you only red color, I I did show you one brown looking one. So you cannot just depend on the appearance. Okay. They could be bluish red, reddish, or dark brown. And they appear as a small bush. Okay. The height of the bush varies from few to several centimeters. Okay, so I told you what should we use the term heterotrichus. Most of the species are heterotrichus in habit, that is, they have prostrate and the erect systems. 
So the prostrate system will be all again multi-branch that is multi-axial and on the lower side of the prostrate system many unicellular rhizoids are developed. Okay, if this is the erect part from this prostrate part no rhizoids will come out. Okay, these are false false root. Okay, because obviously this is not a plant. No, we cannot say that it's a tap root or a through root. It's a false root. It acts like a root. It looks like a root. It behaves like a root, but it's not a root. So it's a false root. Okay, so the term we use them as rhizoids. The rhizoids are lobed at the apex and they form attachment discs. Okay. Then in some parts, they uh, they aggregate and form attachment discs. Okay. So these rhizoids, no, they come out fine from the prostrate system. That's the erect part. They have a disc. Okay. Sort of a disc. And this dish, they, this will attach to the uh, some sort of substrate. Or if they become, if they aggregate together those discs, all those rhizoid discs attached together, they will become an Massive attachment disc. Okay. Now looking at the erect system, the erect filaments, oh, okay, the erect filaments they will develop from the prostrate system. So from the prostrate system, from these roots which have that disc, this erect system will develop. Okay, the erect part will develop. The erect system consists of the main axis and many branches okay so this is the prostrate these are the rhizoids these are the discs then one you have one main axis and from here we will get many many branches okay main axis i write like this main axis and then these are the branch okay so let me delete it so there are two types of branches, long and short. Well, obviously, no, like plants also, they have different sizes of the branch. Now, the branch that are long, we will call them as a branch of unlimited growth or long lateral branch. Okay. And the short branch, we will call them as a branch of limited growth. If one is unlimited, the other one is limited or the other name is Trichoblast. Okay, so the short one is limited growth or aka trichoblast. The long one is unlimited growth or aka long lateral branch. The long branch develop in a spiral or radial symmetry. The trichoblasts are spirally arranged. They are dichotomously branched, colorless and mostly an annual structures bearing sex organs okay so remember the carpospore and the uh, what is that uh, antheridia they will come from the short branch okay but the long branch they are arranged like a wait one minute okay yes the long branch is also spiral okay spiral and the short branch the short branch are also spiral and they are dichotomous branching means in two directions they don't have any color and they they contain the carpospore or the antheridia okay the main axis of the long branch consists of a central siphon so if this is the main axis of the long branch, this is the prostrate system. These are the short branches. Let's say for example here, one female develop. Here the male one, the antheridia. So this main axis, it consists of a here central siphon. Okay, that main axis will have the central siphon. And these siphon, they contain many cylindrical cells, okay, arranged in a vertical row. Cylindrical is like a cylinder, no, like this, okay. 
let's say this one is the long main axis these are the prostrate so these are the cell cylinder like like this they arrange like that okay all right so these are the cylindrical cells okay cylindrical cells okay now this cylindrical cell this central siphon is surrounded by peripheral siphons okay okay here very good you can see nicely hmm. there you can see the peripheral siphon there this is the central siphon part oh, oh. This is the central siphon part, okay, central part and this side ones, these are the peripheral siphon parts on both sides, okay. Here you can see this one, if we cut in TS, this one is the central siphon. Siphon means pipe, okay, because these are algae, you no, know? they have to live under water, they have to keep taking in water. And ex and uh, what to say? Like we are, ha like we have blood. No, they are just uh, blood is uh, water is coursing through them. Okay, the central siphon is surrounded by this one, peripheral siphon. So I think it's clear from this diagram. The, uh, you have pit connections. You have chromatophores. These are organelles. You have a nucleus. Okay, what else can we see from this image? Again, you can see the central siphon there. And this is the peripheral siphon. Okay. You can see the trichoblast. This is the short branch. This is going to be a long branch. means it's going to keep on growing unlimited. This one, trichoblast, means it's a short branch. It'll end here somewhere. It'll produce one female or one male. Okay, this unlimited one, the long branch, it will keep on growing, keep on growing. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Let's see the habit from here. This image, you could see the, this is the erect part and this is the prostrate part. These are the rhizoids. Okay, here you saw the erect system. Then you have the prostrate system and then the rhizoids. And here you can see those attaching discs. Okay, remember? Those discs which will attach to the substrate. So I think it's very clear from the image and from the explanation. I think it's very clear. You can even write in your own words. And again, I will repeat, girls. Whenever you study something, no, before you start reading the text and panicking, you know, uh, getting confused with the words. First, you draw simply. You just with a rough book, no, and a pencil. You just start drawing this. Start drawing twice, thrice, four times. So you will remember the diagram. When you remember the diagram, reading the text just once, you will read the words just once, it will be so clear in your mind. Okay, let me just continue with this, what they have written here. Okay, so uh, the plant is polysiphonous because we have a central siphon and a peripheral siphon. So poly, polysiphonous. And hence, what is the name of the species? Hence, we got the name polysiphonia. Because it has so many pipes. It has one central pipe surrounded by side pipes. Right, so central siphon surrounded by peripheral siphons. That's why the name comes from the word siphon or pipes. Many pipes that we are studying is the polysiphonia. So I think it's enough for you the habit part. So let us look at the cell structure in the next video. Let me just...